I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important question on conditional probability. We are given probability of an event A as 0 0.5, probability of an event B as 0 0.6, and probability of event A union B, that means A or B, is 0 0.8. In this particular situation, you need to answer three questions. First, then the probability of A intersection B is what? Then the probability of A when B has occurred is what? And question number three is, then the probability of B when A has happened is what? So that is the conditional probability. I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So let's try to understand the concept also while we answer. So we have two events A and B. So let me uh, use these two circles for the two events A and B. So let's say this is event A and the other event is event B. So these are the two events in our sample space. Let me show the sample space as something like this with the help of this Venn diagram. So we are saying that probability of event A, which is, let's say this event A, is 0 0.5. Probability of event B, which is that event, is 0 0.6. And their union, that means A or B, is 0 0.8. What is the probability of intersection? So when we say intersection, we're trying to figure out probability of this portion, right? So this is the intersection we are talking about. Now clearly, what you notice here is if you add these two numbers, you get much more than their union. And the reason is, is this intersection being counted twice. So, so that is why. These are not mutually exclusive events well so mathematically you can always write this probability of a union b as probability of a plus probability of b take away this has been counted twice so take away probability of a intersection b right now we can isolate this, bringing it to the left side. So probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A union B, right? So from the given values, we can say this is equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.8. And that is point. 1.1 take away 0.8 gives us a value which is 0 0.3. So the option C is the right option. Perfect. So that is how you get this particular probability. Now the second question is, what is the probability of A when B has occurred? So that means now we are looking for a situation where B has already happened. So, so we are not saying this has happened, right? So B has occurred. So that is what is our case. Now probability for A to happen, probability for A to happen when B has already happened, right? So, so that means we are again into this concentration, right? And therefore, this probability is given as probability of A intersection B, right? So when B has occurred, what is the probability that A can happen? So that is this intersection over the probability of occurrence of B. Does make sense? So without getting into the formulas or remembering them, that makes a common a logic to get the, got the solution, right? So intersection we just found as 0 0.3 and probability of B is given to us as 0 
So this is half, so option D is the right option. Now if you look into the next case clearly, once again, we are looking for probability of B to happen when A has already occurred. So that means this has already occurred, right? This has already occurred. So we could write this as probability of B when A has occurred. So that comes in the denominator, right? So this should be equal to probability of A, right, which happened. And then this portion is intersection of A and B, right? So probability of A intersection B, which is 0 0.3 over 0 0.5. So which is 3 over 5 is our answer. So we get uh, 3 over 5, which is option C, uh, which, be, which is the answer for this particular case, right? So I hope the concept is very clear. So whenever we are talking about conditional probability, as one has happened, what is the probability the other will also happen? In that case, the denominator is the probability of what has already happened. And the numerator is intersection of the two. So I hope this concept is clear and we'll move on with this concept to solve many questions on conditional probability. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe my videos, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.